Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Endgame Item Showcase. And today we are going to be looking at the amazing Asgardian Aegis Shield accessory. I've got it equipped right here. And this shield is the best shield in the Calamity mod. It is a direct upgrade from the Ankh Shield and something that can be obtained after defeating the Devourer of Gods. It's really awesome because it gives a really cool, powerful dash attack and it has so many benefits so let's go ahead and take a look at all of the cool things that this accessory can do the tooltip for the asgardian aegis shows that it grants 10 defense it provides immunity to fire blocks and knockback it provides immunity to most debuffs it adds 40 to your max life and it grants a supreme holy flame dash and that's this right here pretty powerful it can do damage, so if I dash into this slime, I'll go ahead and kill it. And it says it can be used to ram enemies like I just did right there. You can also activate a buff by pressing a button on your keyboard. I've got it selected as N, and that will activate a buff to my damage, critical strike chance, and defense. So when you use this buff, it will actually reduce your movement speed and increase enemy aggro. Although it's not that noticeable of an effect, and the benefits are quite high, so I would still recommend using it. And then you get a 10% damage reduction while submerged in liquid. And the visibility of the accessory will enable or disable the dash. This is a good feature because you may want to disable this during the Supreme Calamitous fight because I've dashed into some of the attacks before by accident. In order to disable it, all you need to do is go over here and just toggle the visibility. And you can see now I'm trying to dash, but it's not doing it. And I turn it on and I can dash again. This shield is so cool and it adds so many different buffs along with this powerful dash. Let's take a look at the buff that you can toggle on and off. If I press N, it will activate the Elysian Guard and my defense will increase. So let's see, it's 211 and if I activate it, it will go up to 231. And then my damage is 36,224 and if I turn it off, my damage drops to 34,499. The overall effect of turning on the Elysian Guard is that it will increase your damage by 15%, it will increase your critical strike chance by 10%, it will give you 20 defense, but it will make your acceleration a lot slower. But when you dash and stuff, you can still move around quite quickly. Like you can see, I'm not like slow by any means. I find using that the Elysian Guard during the Supreme Calamitous fight is actually pretty helpful because it lets me be a little bit more precise because often if you don't have it on, you can just accelerate way too quickly. I've had a lot of people ask about how to set the key bindings for modded items. So let me show you how to do that really quickly. You just go to the general settings menu and then you go to controls just like you're doing key bindings for normal stuff. And all you need to do is go down to mod controls and then it's got all the different mod controls right here. And so you got rage, adrenaline, Elysian guard and all you need to do is change that and it is defaulted to N and I've just kind of left it at that, but you can change it to any button you'd like. And this is the same menu where you can change the key bindings for other mods like Louis AFK, Boss Checklist, Recipe Browser, and all of your other mods. So next I also wanna test how much damage it can do in the dash attack. So let me go ahead and turn on the improved dummy from Louis AFK and let's just see how much damage we can do. So it's like 24,000 damage. I mean, that's actually pretty good for a dash attack. 40,000 right there. So yeah, we can do some pretty good damage and it debuffs the enemy. So pretty sweet. It's definitely not, you know, anything in comparison to end game weapons and stuff, but it's still pretty powerful for a dash attack. Now that we've seen the Asgardian Aegis' different effects, let's take a look at the crafting recipe. So the Asgardian Aegis surprisingly only requires the Ancient Manipulator. So you can craft this right after defeating the Devourer of Gods before you do the Frost Moon or the Pumpkin Moon. All you need is the Asgard's Valor, the Elysian Aegis, Cosmolite, and Phantoplasm. Cosmolite you'll get from the Devourer of Gods, and Phantoplasm you'll get from the Dungeon Post Moon Lord. The Elysian Aegis is a drop from Providence if you defeat her in the Underworld. And then the Asgard's Valor is actually a fairly complicated recipe. You need the Ankh Shield, and then you need the Ornate Shield, which is crafted from these cryonic bars and crystal shards. Then you need the shield of the ocean, which is something you can get pretty early in the game from Victide and Coral. And then you also need Abandon, which you can get from the Brimstone Elemental. And lastly, you need the Core of Calamity and Life Fruit. The Core of Calamity is just the combination of cores of Sunlight, Elium, and Chaos. And these are the upgraded versions of the Essence of Sunlight, Elium, and Chaos. 
The rest of this recipe is quite familiar. It's just the recipe for the Ankh shield, which is just the combination of the obsidian shield and the Ankh charm. But getting the Ankh charm is pretty tricky. You'll need to craft all of these accessories. There's plenty of information about how to acquire all of these things. Basically, lots of hard mode and pre-hard mode enemies will drop different items, like, for example, the adhesive bandage. You can see these enemies will drop it. And the bezoar, these enemies from the jungle will drop it. And then for the plan, the same sort of thing. You need the trifold map, which you can get from like mummies, giant bats, the clown, and the fast clock, which you can get from mummies, wraiths, and pixies. So just by playing the game, you'll acquire a lot of these items. But one thing that Calamity does that makes it even easier is that they have actual recipes for a lot of these. So you can craft the armor polish from bone and ancient bone dust, which is much easier than farming it up. And like vitamins, you can craft from bottled water, water leaf, blink root, day bloom, beetle juice. So each of these have recipes and that will make it much easier to get all of your different items for your charm. But that's only in the Calamity mod. If you're playing vanilla and you're trying to get the Ankh shield, you're gonna have to farm up these different items. And then for the obsidian shield, it's just the cobalt shield plus the obsidian skull, which you craft out of obsidian. And the last thing is the cobalt shield, which is just found in the dungeon. And you can also craft it from cobalt bars in the Calamity mod. And that's the quite complicated recipe for the Asgardian Aegis. It's definitely an accessory I would highly recommend though, even though the recipe's a bit tricky. It's quite fun to use and very, very powerful in the end game. Even with this Elysian Guard active, my max speed is 61. If I turn it off, my max speed is still 61. So you're actually not losing max speed when you're running using the Elysian Guard, but you are losing acceleration. You can do just consistent dashes as fast as you can. You can see my average speed is like 68, 70, and that's because I'm just dashing constantly. So you can gain like 10 miles an hour just by constantly dashing. So that's definitely something I would recommend doing when you need some extra movement speed. It's a little bit fatiguing for your fingers to constantly be dashing, but that extra movement speed is sure helpful. And that's it for the Asgardian Aegis, the best shield in the Calamity mod. It is such an amazing accessory. I would highly recommend getting it. The ability to press N and turn on the Elysian Guard is really awesome, and you don't lose that much mobility, especially if you use a lot of dashes. So I would definitely recommend trying that out, especially on boss fights. And that concludes this showcase video of the Asgardian Aegis. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. I also post lots of other content, like I'm doing a Terraria death mode playthrough using the Rogue class, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.